Alright, real quick. Uh, one player's name was mentioned a lot today, and I want to make sure that you guys learn something that he taught me, uh, Kevin Herter. So write this down. Kevin Herter, I sat with him for uh, 45 minutes at the end of our workouts every time we trained last summer. I picked his brain, I asked him questions like, how did you get to the league? What was your transition like, your process like going from University of Maryland? He said he didn't even know he was going to go to the NBA. He didn't even know that, you know, people were looking at him. So he gave me the secret to understanding the difference between a pro and a professional. So you can write that as kind of like your heading. The difference between a pro and a professional. He broke it down for me. He said a pro is someone that got drafted. Someone that got a contract to play for money. There is about 400 in the NBA. I think uh, maybe 300 to 350 are actively signed to a roster, right? 30 teams, 15 spots, something like that, right? Maybe 12 spots. Then you got free agency. Then you got a few thousand overseas. So there's really not a lot of room in the world if you think about it, right? But here's the difference between a guy that's just a pro, because you can be getting paid $200 a month, like I told y'all last night, and that makes you a pro. So just because somebody's Instagram says retired pro, that don't mean that he played in Europe. He could have played in Mexico. You can drive to Mexico, that's not overseas. There's no water between <laughs> Texas and Mexico, right? So I'm just telling y'all, there's a difference between pro and professional. Here's what a professional is. A professional is someone who lives a life of professionalism all the time. A someone who, there's someone who has a routine someone who has a certain mindset, they understand what their goals are, they have a standard for themselves, and they live by that standard. Who's the uh, starting big man for the Atlanta Hawks? Capella. Capella, and then you got who else? The other guy catches all the lobs, John Collins. Kevin Herter said when he played for the Hawks, John Collins lifted weights five days a week. He said when they traveled, even on a back-to-back, -back, as soon as they would land, whatever hotel they were in, he would find the weight room in the hotel or the nearest high school, the nearest college, the nearest fitness, whatever gym, and he would just go. Like straight out to the plane, drop his bags, go straight there. That's a professional. Without fail. Every city they were in, if they just won, if they just lost. And overseas, it's the same thing. We had guys that didn't play 20 minutes a game. Guess what they had to do after the game? No matter what, win, lose, or draw. Lift weights. They had to do conditioning. They had to run. They had to get an extra workout in with me. Why? Because they were professionals. We had a standard for them. You don't have to be getting paid to be a professional. Write that down. Professionalism doesn't start when you get your first contract. Professionalism begins either out of the womb or whenever you just learn it. It's not something that we're necessarily born with, but you can be taught how to be a professional. That's why you're here at this camp. We are trying to show you guys what you should be doing and expecting from yourself on a regular basis. This is not something that you need us to do. This is something that once you're exposed to it, you can never forget it. Does that make sense? A professional also understands that it takes multiple people to get where they need to go. So like last night, I talked to y'all about greeting people when you walk in, speaking to everyone. If you play college, how many of your janitors know you? I've always been best friends with all the janitors at the colleges I played at. I played NAIA, I went D3, I played at a Christian college. I knew their names, I knew their children's names, their wives. That got me a key to the gym every time. Every single time. I would speak to them after a loss or after a win. I never just walked straight to the locker room. Some of you guys who are in college, you might have a work study job, right? How do you behave on your job? I had to wash my teammates' jerseys, shorts after games. If I scored 30 and you scored one point, I, my work study job was still to wash your drawers. <laughs> Could you do that? Could you be the man? I was the team captain, the leading scorer, I had the assist record at the school, and I had to stay after every game and dust them out the floor. 
I would put water in the Gatorade jugs. I would put all the chairs out. Then I would work out. Then I would do walkthroughs. Then my team would do whatever they do. I'd work out again. And then I'd be first in the huddle, breaking it down, play the game, stay after the game without fail. I gave my coach scouting reports. I would tell my coach what we finna do, how we gonna guard it. I watched the film. I had my own synergy. Professionalism doesn't start because you play pro. I had a pro contract offered to me in the middle of my senior year. I turned it down. I didn't need that. I understood I'm already that. I was 28 years old, I was too old. I knew the college game just slowed down. So it's gonna take me probably three years for the pro game to slow down. I'm gonna be an old ass rookie. That ain't gonna work. So mentally I said, I'm okay. Have you gotten to that point in your career where you're okay with your career so far? Are you proud of what you've done yet? Have you, do you feel like you've overturned every stone? Like there's nothing I haven't explored. No part of my game I haven't tried to improve. Nothing I haven't asked of myself. I'm not saying you have to run yourself into the ground. I did that. But have you at least attempted to exhaust yourself? Write this down. A professional would rather burn out. They would rather burn out before they just rust out. Something that rusts, it rusts because of lack of motion. There's no energy in it. It's just in one spot. Moisture gathers, the elements beat it down like a car. A professional would rather burn out before they rust out. Professionals are always trying to get better. Kobe worked with who? Hakeem Olajuwon. Then LeBron went and did it. Then Dwight Howard went and did it. Somebody's got to start something. Why not you? Why wait till somebody else says, go do this, and then you follow? Does that make sense? All right. We're going to break down some quick film so we can play. This is not a play. This is just an action. There are certain things that you need to learn in basketball, like pick and roll, DHOs, pin down, split actions. Uh, zoom like that's not a play you don't call that when you just see the opportunity to run it you got to just know how to play the game so what we're trying to give you guys is just that all right real simple write this down once the ball is thrown into the low post I must know what to do next so you see Steph he enters it right that's kind of the mid post to Draymond look at Draymond's body language he's immediately pointing and telling Steph to go set that cross screen for Klay Thompson. I'll take it back a few seconds. Enter into the post. It could be on the low block. Steph, after he set that screen, he immediately dove to the basket. And take it back a little bit. Cross pick, dive. All right? Defense loses track of him. Same thing coming again. Low post, cross pick. Harrison Barnes doesn't dive, but it turns into a ball screen. They don't stop moving. Like, what's up? Somebody had a question? Oh, appreciate you. Low post entry, cross pick. You can get the shooter that's coming off that cross pick. Let me rewind that. So here's how it turns into a ball screen. Notice their spacing. They're never on top of each other. Write this down. The only time you should run towards your teammate on offense is if you are setting a screen, giving them a dribble handoff, or receiving a dribble handoff. The only time you should be close to your teammate on offense is if you are setting a screen, giving a dribble handoff, or receiving a dribble handoff, or you're, they're screening for you. So I'm not going to beat this like a dead horse or anything, but this is what we're going to work on on one of the stations for a couple minutes, and then we'll play out of it when we go up and down. All right, our next action. Write this down. Zoom. Zoom action. Okay, Purdue. Anybody recognize uh, the light-skinned guard? Yeah, Carson Edwards. So we're going to hit the high post. Entry, pin down. 
Now it turns into a DHO. That's one particular option. We'll go through all of those once we get outside. Another action. Pistol. <clears throat> Rewind this a little bit. All right. Just like we ran earlier with the three on O, kick ahead. Look at their spacing. I think that's Berea and Wesley Matthews with Dirk. Hand back. That's one opportunity. You can just take it and drive it. Another thing, instead of kicking it ahead, you can set a back screen. Right? So the wing, instead of running all the way to the corner, is now a little bit higher. Step up screen. If he can't turn the corner, the trailer now sets a flare screen for a shot. One more and then we'll stop. Back pick. They look like they're switching. Right? Flare again. One more shot. So when we get out there, the coaches are going to split up. We'll go on individual baskets, and they will make sure you understand this. We'll rotate after a few minutes just like we did last night. Then when we get on the full court, you'll play. Stay with your teams. If you have any questions, make sure you ask them. Guys, y'all have been doing amazing. Do not let the standard fall. Keep the energy the same, all right? Good stuff. Come on, come on, come on. Uh, can you can you get them into like a, a dynamic for like two minutes? Uh, you